this is one of the town's original gates. They were originally built uh, as the walls were built in the 1300s and they were housed with guards uh, heavily fortified to keep the marauders out of town and to keep the villagers safe. It's one of the things that attracted the people uh, to the city, uh, particularly the farmers and commerce that they could be protected inside. But this is a beautiful example that still exists today uh, of one of the towers that they have in the city. a cozy little bar and bistro. I think this is an original well. You can't even see the bottom of it. So I've now been here 10 days almost and as much as I love German food all the sausage is doing a number on my stomach. So I'm having a good old-fashioned hamburger and fries at this place. I'm not sure if that's going to be any better for my stomach, but it sounds good right now. Mark is doing the same. That and a Pilsner, of course. I did this. I've always loved this building. I just think it's so cool. We're not going to go in it, but here's um, a big museum where you can learn a really good history about Rotenburg. This is the city museum, as I just um, talked about. It used to be a cloister where the nuns lived. And over here, just to the right of the door, get a little bit closer, but there was a window here with a Lazy Susan type gizmo inside where the nuns could actually serve the poor without having to come in contact with anybody because they were cloistered nuns. This is still part of the monastery here. It's the beautiful gardens and in the summer you can walk through here. It closes down in October for the winter so we can't go in but you can still see how beautiful and peaceful it is. I'm sorry that we can't walk through it today because I always love this part. This is my favorite little hotel on the outside here in Rotenburg. It's right here on a, on a curve and it's just always so cute and quaint. It looks like a little country cottage. It's right here on the wall and I'm betting that some of those rooms on that other side have some beautiful views. Another one of the towers guarding the gate. here is part of the outer wall but you can see the beautiful view that they have here and here's looking back at the city over there on the hill you can see part of the wall And you can see how it was protected not only uh, by the wall, but it was hard to get to because it was up on top of a hill. This was the first castle that was built about a thousand years ago. So here is what remains of the castle. And here is what it would have, that's the, that's what we just saw right here. That's pretty much all that exists, that and part of the lower wall. This is what the castle would have looked like. We tend to think of castles as a building, but the castle was actually the entire closure. It was in essence a miniature city. And this is what you would have seen as you approached the city, this imposing wall with these guard towers. This part out here now is a park. You can see it's a beautiful little park. This is a memorial here next to what remains of the Imperial Castle and it's a memorial to the Jews who lost their life here. They were, this was as far back as uh, 1298, the Jews were already being hunted and 
a man by the name of Rentfleisch, who was an executioner, chased down the 450 Jews who had fled here to Rotenburg and taken refuge in what, the remains of the castle. And unfortunately, Rentfleisch found them and executed them. So now we're going to walk back up to the city wall. So this was one of the several gates that people could enter the city into and they had to be checked out and identified. So if you were approaching Rotenburg trying to get in, you had to first make it past this stone gate and as you can see in the tower over there, there were watchmen and then you had to make it into here and at one time right here there was a wooden drawbridge just right here and you can see the grooves up there where the chains would have been to pull the, the drawbridge up and down and see that face that mask right in the middle that was used to pour hot tar boiling water whatever they had to pour on someone who was trying to breach this gate with its giant wooden gate and if you got past all of that then you made it to the inner part of the city so in this mansion right here the same family has lived for over 300 years pretty cool and notice as I was talking about earlier the large door big enough for horses and carriages to go into but this one served double duty with the smaller human sized door and it had a series of old-fashioned doorbells four of them right here however because of tourists constantly ringing them they've had them disconnected I love how they've preserved just about everything they can here these are now used as planters but these would have been troughs for the horses and mules to drink out of and they've just left them here and used them as planters so if you walk straight down the street just from the center square you will see all kinds of cool little shops what mark found something he likes Oh yeah, the meat store. The oh wow. The world of meat. World of sausages. <laughs> well, it's not just sausages. You've got ham, you've got, looks like you've got some beef, a little bit of beef there. Yep. A little something, something. All kinds of stuff. Unfortunately, we can't take any of it home. But there's all kinds of shopping on this street now. I will tell you, it's somewhat expensive, it's geared to tourists, but it's a beautiful street just to stroll down. And down here at the bottom, just past where that right truck is, you're gonna see one of the most photographed streets in the world. And there's the criminal museum where we were the other day. We found the Lint Chocolate Store. Look at that ginormous chocolate there. Yes, it is real. Well, there's something there for the Christmas season spoiling this view. I'll have to insert a picture here of what it normally looks like but this is one of the most photographed streets in the world. <laughs>